All right, the graphing today, we're going to not have to spend a lot of time on like yesterday. We didn't have to spend a lot of time because when we're graphing, most of these more advanced type deals you're going to do in your graphing calculator. And I'm fine with that. I don't have a problem with that at all. However, when we're dealing with rational functions, which is what we're talking about graphing today, we have to learn how to find asymptotes. You'll be asked specifically to define asymptotes on your test. So... First one that we're going to make a little note on is vertical asymptote. And remembering from your previous algebra classes, an asymptote is what you approach but never touch. You get infinitely closer to it, but you never hit it. Okay, so your test to find vertical asymptotes, all you're going to do is set your denominator equal to zero and then solve. So that'll give you x equals something, and that will be a vertical asymptote. Okay, set your denominator equal to zero and solve. You know there's going to be a denominator because we're talking about rational functions. That means a fraction. Okay, the vertical asymptote is the easier one. When I, on the next page when we put horizontal up there, we got three different scenarios for what we got to look for on horizontal asymptotes. You got what we need on that one? You good, Grace? Mm -hmm. All righty, horizontal. That's some totes. Like I said, we got three different scenarios for this, and it's all going to deal with degree. And we talked, I reminded you yesterday that degree is the highest power on your variable. So when I'm looking at for horizontal asymptotes, if the degree of my numerator numerator degree is less than the degree of my denominator, so denominator degree, I will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. The numerator degree is less than the denominator degree, I'll have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, if my numerator degree, and we'll go through all these scenarios, is equal to my denominator degree, I'll have an asymptote at y equals a over b. Now, I know you don't know what the a over b is yet. We'll see it when we get to that example. So we got a less than, we got an equal. The last one will be if my numerator degree is greater than my denominator degree, I'll have to use synthetic division and I'll end up with an asymptote that is in slope intercept form. And it'll be diagonal. Okay, so it's not technically a, a horizontal one on that one. All right, uh, as I give you these different equations, I do want you to graph them in your calculator and you'll be able to go to your table and help me out with the table, but we're gonna mostly focus on finding the different asymptotes because you can graph them in your calculator pretty good. We just gotta make sure we can find the asymptote. This first one I got here says f of x equals 2 over x minus 2. All right, always going to check for vertical asymptotes first. Vertical asymptote, we said set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. So if we had x minus 2 is equal to 0, we would have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. 
Okay, easy enough to get that, not a big deal. There's our vertical asymptote. Now, let me hit these buttons again because that was pretty bad. That's such a fun tree. When I find x equals 2, I'm going to draw a dotted line through that. When you graph that on your calculator, that dotted line won't show up, but it's going to help me to graph it. Okay, so we've got vertical asymptote taken care of. Then we said on a horizontal asymptote, we had to know what the degrees of everything are. What's the degree of the numerator? And it's a trick. 1? Nope. This one would have a 1 but this one has a variable. So the numerator doesn't have a variable, so there's no degree up there at all. So we're not going to have to mess with horizontal asymptotes when there's no degree up there at all. So when I start graphing this now, I'm going to have a section on the left side of my vertical asymptote, and I'm going to have a section on the right side of my vertical asymptote. So on the left side, if I pick some x's to the left of that, 1, 0, negative 1, I'm going to plug those in. Okay, you've got it graphed on your calculator already. Rachel, go to your table and tell me when x is 1, what's y? Negative 2. 0. Uh, negative 1. And 1. Negative 2 thirds. Alright, so on this side I've got 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 2 thirds. So what you'll see on that, and you Hit it on your calculator and check and make sure. Well, my orienting's bad. It's a, look at that. It's a curve. Vibrating up here. It's a curve that should not be jagged through there. That it's going closer and closer and closer to your asymptote. And it's also leveling off on that axis. Okay. So now I've got a section on the right side. So that's two. I'm going to check three, four, and five. Okay, Rachel, help me out on these. Three for two. Uh-huh. Two. No, hold on. Three is two. Three is two. I got you. I didn't understand first. Sorry. Uh, That's okay. Um, four is one, and five is two-thirds. All right. So over three, up two. Over four, up one. And over five, up two-thirds. So it'll be the same kind of deal there. Something that looks similar to that. Now, you can get a real good picture of that on your calculator. It just won't have that asymptote. But you'll have a question on your test at the end of the week that asks you to tell what the asymptotes are. So even though you can get a good picture and you can go to your table and get good points, you still got to be able to figure out what the asymptote is. Okay? Everybody all right there? Because I'm going to go through. Remember on the horizontal checklist thing, we had three scenarios, and that one wasn't even one of them. So we still need to talk about all three of those scenarios. You all right? Told you. Uh, <laughs> funny stuff. That's what this is. Yes. Yes. x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 5. Just because my personal preference, I'm always going to find the vertical asymptote first. It's easiest. Set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. So if x minus 5 equals 0, it means our vertical asymptote is at x equals 5. Everybody find there. That's easy stuff. Now, I'm going to count on every line on this one so that I'm not all the way off the paper already. So x equals 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to be a dotted line through there. All right. Horizontal. What's the degree of the numerator? What's that number I'm pointing at? Very good, Caleb. What's the degree of the denominator? 1. So my scenario now, my numerator degree 2 is greater than my denominator. That's another degree than sign. My denominator degree 2 is greater than 1. What did it say we did for a horizontal asymptote when our numerator was greater than our denominator? Synthetic. Synthetic division. Okay. So x minus 5 equals 0 means a 5 goes outside our box. 
This is a good smart word today. 1x squared, 1x, negative 6 inside. 1 times 5 is 5. Add and get 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Add and get 24. Now, when you do synthetic division, when this scenario happens and your numerator degree is greater than your denominator degree, your remainder gets kicked to the curb. Poor thing doesn't count now. All that we're concerned with is this. So this would be a 1x plus 6. That is going to be our, I can't write a y, that's going to be our asymptote there. Remember I wrote down, it's in slope intercept form, mx plus b. So this is going to cross the y-axis at 6 and have a slope of 1. So I'm counting on every line up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then it has a slope of 1, rise 1, run 1. Rise 1, run 1. I can't get them on there. So it would go... You always, that's where it always starts. On slope intercept form, mx plus b always... You got it. You remember that. That's back from the good old algebra one days, isn't it? Let's see if I can. So it would be, that asymptote would be a diagonal one looking like that. Now, if I'm remembering right from first period when we graphed this, do y'all have it graphed yet? Kind of, kind of looks like, yeah, graph it real quick. I think it looks like kind of, somebody said a knee bent. It's a huge curve in there. Is that kind of what it's looking like? Let me look at yours kind of so I can try to draw it. Yeah. Kind of, uh, Grace has been underneath for and it comes like that. But see how it's bordered by that asymptote and it's bordered by that one? So it kind of kept it all in there. You'll be able to get the graph easy. You'll be able to get your ordered pair easy. Just make sure that you know how after today to find the asymptotes. Okay? All right, let's see. Got two more scenarios, don't we? There's a good one. I got one in here. This next one's probably my favorite one of the day. Because it's got two vertical asymptotes. All right, so that says f of x equals x. That's over x squared minus 4 that got all jumbled up there. x squared minus 4 is what that says in the denominator. And I was just telling Grace, this one has two vertical asymptotes. If we take x squared minus 4 and set it equal to 0 and solve, there's two different ways you can solve it. You can move the 4 and do it algebraically. Okay, let's look at what that would look like. Try to, if we can read this thing that's happening here. When you take the square root to undo that squared when you square root something you can be positive or negative okay so you see two asymptotes there other way is you can rewrite x squared minus 4 as a difference of square oh my gosh as a difference of squares x plus 2 x minus 2 either way you get two vertical asymptotes I wonder Alright, so two, <coughs> negative two. Now what we're going to see on that, that just cut our graph into three sections. Remember that first one we worked, I did the left of the asymptote and the right of the asymptote. Now I'm going to have the left, I'm going to have the middle, and I'm going to have the right. Okay, but we still got to check for horizontal. What's the degree of the numerator? If it's just an x, what's the understood degree? 1. Degree of denominator. It was x squared. 2. So in this case, I got a 1 and a 2, and 1 is less than 2. So what did our scenario tell us if 1 is less than 2, if our numerator is less than our denominator? What did it say our horizontal asymptote was? Y equals 0. Uh-huh. So we're going to have a horizontal asymptote. Right there. All right. So let's go to the left of negative 2. So I'm going to check negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. Aaron, you got them? Rachel's getting them. 
No, you never can, oh, you already do yeah. have? Yeah. What's, what are they there? Negative three fifths for negative three. For negative four is um, negative one third. And for negative five is negative five over 21. All right, so we got negative three and negative three fifths. Negative four, negative one third, and then negative five. All right, so what we see there, it's going to get real close up here to this one. But see, it almost looks like I could just draw a line like that. But remember, you can't touch that dotted line. So it's going to level out up here on this dotted line, and then before it touches that other one, it'll have to make the turn. Okay, so we got that kind of curvy looking thing there. All right, now when I go to the middle, I'm ready to go to the middle section next. I'm going to do the points in between there, negative 1, 0, and 1. Options before we do these, sometimes you'll have parabolic looking things in there. Sometimes you'll have snake looking things in there. That's just what most of these graphs look like. So, Rachel, negative 1, 1 third. 0, 0, and 1. And 1 third. Okay. So negative 1 is 1 third, 0, 0, and 1, negative 1 third. So I can tell that since one of these is up and one of these is down, it's going to be that snake thing. I can't just draw a line because, again, I would touch these asymptotes. So i got to be coming through those points and then turn before I hit the asymptote. Same thing here. Turn before I hit the asymptote. So other than the disconnect, you got that snake-looking graph in there. Now when I go to the far right section past 2, I'm going to do 3, 4, and 5. Here's what I expect from this section. It's either, and not a lot of options, but it'll either be the same, like flip there, or it'll be the same flip there. So I just got to figure out which of these sections this same curve is going to be drawn in. It's going to be easy to tell because here I did all negatives. I'm doing their absolute values here, so that'll be in pretty good indicator. What'd you get on three? Um, for three is three-fifths. Alright. Four is one-third. And then five-twenty-one? Yep. Alright, so you can see these are positives. It's the absolute values. So it's taking what was negative-negative, putting it positive-positive. So I can just go ahead and draw that. And I've looked at the graphs on that on your calculator. It looks pretty good. They just, again, don't tell you those asymptotes. So that would be your job, is you'd have to figure out what your asymptotes were. Use your calculator to get the graph. Use your calculator to get the table if you need to. But then you've got to be able to get your asymptotes. All right, we've done one with no horizontal. We've done one where we had synthetic division. We've done one where it was y equals 0. The last one we've got is that A over B thing. Right? Is that where we are? Yeah. Okay, let's look at one of those. I'll be able to look at that and tell. Two. two. Very good. So I go one, two. X equals two is my vertical asymptote. All right. Got to check horizontal now. What's the degree of my numerator? One. Grace is right. Hope the rest of y'all got a clue. What's the degree of my denominator? One. So now I'm in a scenario where they're equal. And this is where it said Y equals A over B. The A and the B... I didn't know a short way to sum that up in your notes. That is the leading coefficient of the numerator and the denominator. So the leading coefficient 
is the number in front of where you got the degree from. So this one, the numerator would be 3. The denominator would be 1. So y equals 3 would be our horizontal asymptote because of 3 over 1. Okay, now you know where the A and the B come from. You good on that? All right, so y equals 3, 1, 2, 3. There's my horizontal asymptote. Okay, still going to pick sides of my vertical one there. So that's 2. I'm going to do 1, 0, and negative 1. What you got, Rach? Um, for 1 is negative 5, 0 is negative 1, and for negative 1 it's 1 third. Alright, so I got 1, negative 5, I'm going to scroll that a smidgen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, negative 1, and negative 1, 1 third. Okay, so that's going to be a pretty big curve through there because I know I can't touch this asymptote so it's going to level off there. And it's going up, 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 but there it's got to turn because it can't touch that asymptote. So that's going to be a pretty big curve, something like that. We are out there. Look okay here. All right, now I'm going to go three, four, five on the other side. And I think these are huge if I'm remembering or bigger anyway. Three is 11, four is 7, and five is 17 and three. Uh, 11 is off the top of my graph, and I think 4 is also, 7 is also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, it'll be somewhere way up there. And then 17 thirds, that is 5 and 2 thirds, so I can do that one. Well, kind of. Okay, but look at where your asymptotes are. So these points that I have all the way up the top of my graph have to be in that 90 degree region, right? So I can, even though I don't have a whole lot of room, I can draw kind of, kind of what it's supposed to look like through there. Your calculator on this one would be just about as limited as I am because it defaults to a 10 by 10 screen. You can change your zoom and see it better, but you should just have a picture of a curve up there. What's the matter? Is that 17 thirds? Same as 5 and 2 thirds. So I went over 5. There's two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Okay. So it's, it'd be right above that. I'm, I missed it. Sorry. No, I, I, was, I was confused on how to figure out where it would be placed. But yeah, it's just kind of an estimate. You're, like, and I've said this all since, since we've been graphing these today, you're not going to struggle with the graph. You can type that in your calculator and you can get a good picture of the graph. You're not going to struggle finding these points. You can either plug them in, do them algebraically pretty easy, or you can go to your table and find them there. What you're going to have to make sure you got your notes on, remember, is how to find your asymptotes. Okay? You'll be able to get the graph pretty good. How do you find the vertical asymptote? Denominator equal to zero. Good, Rachel and Grace. What is the scenario on the horizontal asymptote if my numerator degree is less than my denominator degree? Y equals zero. Good, good, good. What is it if my numerator degree is greater than my denominator degree? You said that division. Chunk the remainder. Slope intercept form. Very good. What about if my numerator degree is equal to my denominator degree? Good. Leading coefficients. A over B, take the leading coefficients. Thank you. Be all right on that? Got a note on that? Very good. All right. So first period tomorrow will be, the seniors will be in here a little bit before they leave. So they're going to have to work on their study. They're going to get to work on their study guides on their own before they leave. Y'all won't have that opportunity if y'all are going on the field trip. If you're not, you will. But y'all will just get, if you're gone on the field trip tomorrow, Y'all will just get your study guides on Thursday and go over them on Thursday and then test them on Friday. Okay? From what I've heard, the nine weeks actually ends Thursday, which makes no sense to me, but what, I mean, it doesn't matter. We've got a fourth nine weeks as well, so 
if the nine weeks is already over, this test will go on the fourth nine weeks, and whatever, however that doesn't matter. Hook it up. All right. Should have stepped over before I handed it back to you. Thank you. 